this project deals with some aspects of Eurocode 2 version 2023. Watch this channel for further selected topics. This video is about clause 12, uh, uh, named detailing, and I will talk about the minimum reinforcement for brittle failure part one. Members having less longitudinal reinforcement than AS min given in clause 12 should be designed in accordance with clause 14, and clause 14 is plain concrete. So this means that when you do not put enough minimum reinforcement in your structure, then you cannot see it as a, a reinforced concrete, then it's just plain concrete. And then there are totally different rules that you have to apply. Minimum reinforcement uh, for in chapter 12 and not in chapter nine, minimum reinforcement is needed to ensure distributed cracking, to handle forces from restrained deformation, which is a little bit strange because chapter nine is about restrained deformation, not chapter 12. Minimum reinforcement is needed to ensure deformation capacity and avoid unpredicted cracking, which is brittle failure, and to ensure constructability. The area of minimum reinforcement AS min shall provide nominal section strength, which is at least equal to the effect causing cracking. This seems to be the same definition that we have seen in clause 9. Just remember that clause 9 is always SLS calculation, and clause 12 is always ULS calculation, ultimate limit state. Then for the uh, minimum reinforcement according to clause 12, uh, we can have the situation of bending with or without an actual force any d min, or we can have pure tension. For bending with the actual force any d min, the formulation of 12.1 is equal to the moment of resistance in presence of any d must be bigger than the cracking moment in presence of NED. So this is the only formulation that you get in the code. There is no closed formulation for AS min. So you have to uh, uh, you have to, to 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 find it out for yourself. How how do you calculate AS min now? Just a reminder, in Eurocode version 2004, in 9.2.11, for brittle failure, the minimum reinforcement was given by a closed formulation, which is saying it's the maximum of 1.3% of BD and 0.26 BD FCTM divided by FAK. This is very useful and very easy in, in, in use. This form, formulation 12.1, there is not even AS min mentioned in the formulation. For pure tension, AS min is then equal to this simplified uh, formulation, which is uh, very easy to understand. Is it just the uh, uh, reinforcement at yield strength that this force must be equal to the total uh, um, tension force that the section can take without taking into account any reinforcement. Now let's consider this form formula of 12.1. How, how, how would we be able now to calculate AS min from this? Um, first of all, there is a limit in the, when there is compression, when any D is compression, then there is a limit that you cannot uh, take into account more compression than 0.5 AC FCD. We will see why this is the case. MR min 
uh, as a function of n in the min is the moment resistance of the section with AS min acting as a stress of FAK, the yield stress of the reinforcement, and in presence of the actual force. And n in the min is the actual force at ULS, persistent or transient, providing the least compression in the member or the maximum tension in the member if tensile actual forces occur, occur. So for tensile forces, I don't see any big problem. But for compression, the least compression in a member, that's in most cases zero, isn't it? So how, how can you estimate the least compression in the member? Now, we must remember that chapter 12 is in fact about brittle failure. So brittle failure occurs after that the, con that the uh, construction is built, in most cases. So it means that the least compression in the member means that you have only that weight in the, in, the, in the construction. And then you have to be very careful because if you have a building where some levels of the building uh, can be demolished, then the NED min will, will get uh, smaller. So it's very tricky to calculate the minimum reinforcement in presence of any min, because any min will uh, uh, lower the needed minimum reinforcement. So be careful with that. It is uh, advisable to take zero when it is a compression force. M critical is the cracking moment of the section in presence of any min. The cracking moment may be calculating, assuming a linear distribution of normal forces of the cross section. A linear distribution, but we are talking about ULS. So now this is a little bit confusing, confusing, but this means that you can uh, calculate in a pure elastic way. That's what it means. And it, it stays because a cracking moment. It's not ULS, it's not SLS. It's both effect on the same time. So now to, to, to make it clear for the user, they talk about a linear distribution. I would say it's an uh, um, elastic calculation. And then where the maximum tens tension stress is taken as a concrete tensile strength FCTM. Okay. Now they talk about FCTM. In chapter nine, it was always FCTF effective. Now it's FCTM, so be aware of that. The influence of the reinforcement may be neglected. Now, this is uh, very well that this was put there because otherwise M critical or M for the cracking moment is also a function of the minimum reinforcement. And then it will be very difficult to use this formula because both sides of the equation will be a function of the minimum reinforcement. We see immediately to use this formula 12.1, it's very cumbersome and it's not very practical. So what I'll, I'll try to do is, first of all, I, I will explain why uh, we introduced a small uh, a upper limit for the compression force. And then I will try to give you a closed formula for some cases. Let's assume pure bending. So no actual force of presence. We discussed it before. When NAD is a compression, it's best to take it equal to zero. When it's tension, then we will see how we will uh, handle this. Um, for pure bending, we can uh, when we are neglecting the contribution of reinforcement, which was uh, allowed, plus linear distribution of normal stresses, it means pure elastic calculation. Then the cracking moment is given by BA squared over six times FCTM. This is a well-known formula uh, in elasticity. Again, in principle, MCR is a function of the reinforcement. Then FCTM, we've seen that in the previous previous videos you are equal to this formula. I just mentioned it. Now, before we go further on, just remember what I'm going to tell you now in the rest of this video. It's not in the code. It's my own interpretation. 
the reduced cracking bending moment is then given by uh, M MCR divided by BD squared FCD. And FCD, as a reminder, was given by this formulation with NCC equals to 40 divided by FCK as, uh, to the power one third and always smaller than one. KTC is one uh, in this case. The minimum reinforcement to avoid brittle failure in pure bending is then given by the classic formula for the calculate for calculating the needed reinforcement in ULS, which is the bending moment divided by the lever arm divided by normally it should be stated FID. It's the design value of the tensile strength in the in the reinforcement. But because we've seen it per definition for the minimum reinforcement, we use the yield stress FAK for the steel stress. The cracking moment now is in domain 1B, uh, and the lever arm zeta can be obtained by linear interpolation. So the, the error that you make is very small. Um, and this is only valid in domain 1B. That means that the reduced bending moment must be between 0 and 0 0.104. This uh, cracking moment that belongs to domain 1B, when you have calculated a lot of cracking bending moments, you will see that you will always end up in domain 1B. But uh, in some cases, maybe this is not the case. That's why I put the limit of uh, the reduced bending moment between 0 and 0.104. I put this limit there because otherwise you need another formula to calculate the lever arm. Some, uh, uh, it's also uh, allowed to use zeta equal to 0.9 or 2.95 or 2.85. It depends on how uh, uh, accurate you want your calculation to be. But in most cases, cracking moment is in domain 1B, so this formula is valid. The following relationships can then be written. Beta, we will take beta as a parameter uh, D over H. D is the effective depth and H the total depth of the section. The, uh, what I'm Telling now all those formulations is only valid for rectangular cross sections, of course. Then the cross section is B times H, or you can rearrange it, and BD is then equal to beta times the cross section of the concrete. Now we have six formulas, and you can substitute those six formulas one in the other, and you can find a closed formulation for. AS min for the minimum reinforcement for the concrete quality smaller than 40 megapascal. AS min is given by this form. And you will see it's a function of FCK, the concrete quality, steel quality, and of course the cross section of, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the cross section and uh, as an, uh, an, an, an beta. It's also depending on beta, which is D over H. For FCK between 40 and 50 megapascal, the formula uh, is like this. And for uh, high strength concrete, the formula is like this. Now the whole formulation is now for bending, pure bending. So it means that NAD min is zero. And for rectangular sections can now be written as a closed formulation. And you see here the three formulas with beta equal to D over H. Those formulas here are much more practical to apply. We can now study those, those formulas and we make a graph on the X axis is the concrete quality and on the Y axis, it's the mechanical reinforcement ratio expressed in percentage. And then the mechanical uh, reinforcement ratio is defined as the minimum reinforcement times the yield stress divided by the cross-section times the concrete quality. In principle, the mechanical reinforcement is defined according uh, uh, with FAD or FCD. 
but I've chosen here to take the characteristic value because we are calculating the reinforcement with FAK. But it doesn't matter, it's just a, a proportionality factor. Now, when we look at this graph, we've, we've done this for different values of beta, which is V over H, ranging from 0.7 to 0.95. Now, bear in mind, uh, a beta coefficient of 0.7 is more likely to be a slab, and on the other end, a 0.95, it's more likely to be a beam. So it goes from slab gradually to beam. And then you can see for a concrete quality of, F, of uh, FC, uh, a concrete quality of 30 megapascal, you will see that the typical value of the mechanical reinforcement ratio is between 1.8, something like that, 1.7, 1.8, up to 2.4%. So now you have an idea what the uh, value uh, can be of the mechanical reinforcement ratio for minimum reinforcement for brittle failure. We can rearrange the data and on the X axis, we put beta, which is D over H and the Y axis, it's again the mechanical reinforcement ratio in percentage. We see now in, at one extreme, when beta is 0.95, that this is more or less the re region for beams, that the mechanical ratio uh, varies from 1.8 up to 1%, uh, according to, uh, depending on the concrete quality. On the other extreme side, we will see that, for instance, for slabs, which is uh, in this region, slabs are in this region, that the mechanical reinforcement ratio is between 2.5 and 1.3%. So it's important that you remember that the minimum reinforcement required for brittle failure, that there is more minimum reinforcement needed in slabs than in beams, and the difference can be significant. For concrete quality C30, we can now just plot uh, one of those curves like we've seen in the previous slides, like slides, sorry, that on the x-axis we have the beta, d over h, the y-axis, the mechanical reinforcement ratio. And then you will see that we can find a perfect uh, fitting. And it gives us the minimum mechanical reinforcement ratio for C30, huh? concrete quality 30, equal to this formula. And we can make an approximation, and this can be rewritten as more or less 1 over 60 beta. We can uh, uh, plug in the, the uh, formula for the mechanical reinforcement ratio, and we find that the minimum reinforcement needed for brittle failure for concrete with grade 30 equals more or less B h squared divided by 1000 d. And this is a very interesting formula for an estimate uh, of, of for the required minimum reinforcement to avoid brittle failure with bending, with under pure bending. So it's the most commonly used formula. Now we will look at the difference between the version of Eurocode 20, 2004 and 2023. On the left-hand side, you will see on the y-axis the uh, ratio of 2023 by 2024, and on the x-axis the concrete quality. And we've plotted again the different curves for beta values ranging from 0.7 up to 0.95. First of all, we will see that above this line, we have an increase in uh, minimum reinforcement, an increase uh, uh, with a reference point 2004, and we have a decrease uh, on the other side. So you see that it's, it's almost exactly in the middle. We have in fact up to 30% increase and down to 30% uh, decrease 
That's what I mean by in the middle. We also see on this graph that in the beginning you have uh, an inclination, or the others is always is almost horizontal, but you have an inclination in the beginning. This is because in Euro in the Eurocode version 2004 we have an under limit of the minimum reinforcement for brittle failure, which is 1.3% of BD. This under limit is not in the version 2023, so that's why there is an inclination here. The difference between the um, uh, minimum reinforcement required in 2023 and 2004, uh, this difference is more or less uh, constant for uh, concrete qualities from C25 up to C50, which is the horizontal branch here. And it was slightly declining, but in fact, it's also horizontal more or less for high strength concrete. Again, you can, in, in this uh, uh, graph, from there to there, uh, this curve, this one, and this one, it's more or less valid for slabs. And then this curve and this and this is valid for beams, more or less. To give you an idea, so beams are on the bottom and slabs on the top. And you will see immediately, slabs gives you an increase and beams a decrease. So the minimum reinforcement for brittle failure in the version 2023 is smaller than the one of 2004 for D over H uh, bigger than 0.81, right? which, is, which is here. It's in between. It's 0.81. And the uh, uh, Minimum reinforcement of uh, in the version of 2023 is bigger for D of H smaller than 0.81. And we can see this is for beams and this is for flaps. We can rearrange the, the data and we can take the ratio in function of beta. And then you will see that the curve form, of course, because it was an horizontal tack, uh, an horizontal branch. And then you will see that that for C25 and C50, uh, the, all those curves they are on top of one each other, more or less. And C90 gives you a small difference, so this is in, in fact the same curve. So it's in fact more or less independent of the concrete quality. The ratio eh, of the minimum reinforcement is independent of the concrete quality and only dependent on beta, on D of H. And again, we will see that the limit values of increase or decrease, it's 30% for D, of, D over H smaller than 0.8, which is this point. So I've rounded it off instead of 0.81, it's now 0.8. Eh? So it's 0.8. You have a 30% as a maximum increase and a 30% decrease. 